We'll be talking about triangles a fair bit during our trigonometry session. So I want to introduce a little bit of notation about triangles and then also talk about a fundamental property of all triangles. So first of all, in order to avoid having to write out big long sentences saying let A, B, and C be the vertices of a triangle, instead we just jump straight to that triangle ABC. And so as soon as you see that you know that we have a triangle and that its vertices have labels A, B, and C. Okay. Also in this class we'll use AB to denote the side length that has endpoints A and B. And if I want to talk about an angle within the triangle, it's I can talk about the angle BAC. A is really the hinge there. So if I think about a little picture of this, I'd have A as my hinge and B and C as my two other endpoints of the triangle. So the angle I'm talking about is that one right there. All right. So let's draw a few triangles here, just to get familiar with this notation and see how it works. So we've got uh, a triangle here with vertices A, B, and C. And I'd like to have the length of A, B be 3. I don't know. And then we want to put the vertex C so that it looks like B, C is a little bit longer than A, C. Maybe somewhere, I guess we want how about somewhere out here? Okay, so there we've got AB has length 3, BC has length 5, and AC has length 4. Now I haven't carefully measured this with a ruler. Just try to get a brief ballpark. It looks like uh, side AB is the shortest and side BC is the longest in my drawing, and definitely that matches our numbers. Now what if we've got some angles? So I can have A, B, C. Looks like uh, the angle at B is pi by 2 radians. Now pi by 2 radians, if you convert it to degrees, is 90 degrees. A very, very special angle. It's a right angle. The two sides are perpendicular to each other there. So I will draw that with a special little box in the corner there. So that's the angle that's at the vertex B. And then I have an angle B, C, A. So at C we have a small angle pi by 6, that's 30 degrees. And at angle, uh, sorry, at vertex A we have an angle of pi by 3, which is 60 degrees, if you convert it. But there's my uh, triangle there, and we'd call this a right angle triangle since it has a right angle. Now we will talk about all sorts of triangles in this course. Some of them will be right angled, some of them will not. So we want to pay close attention to when a triangle is right angled and when it's not, different rules apply. Now, for any triangle we have, whether it's right angled, isosceles, scalene, uh, equilateral, it doesn't matter. Every single triangle the sum of the angles is always pi radians. Now you probably have run into this fact before and they add it up to 180 degrees, but of course we're talking about radians, they add up to pi radians in this class. So if I draw a little picture of this triangle ABC, then that angle at B is a right angle, and then at C we have pi by 4, and I'd like to know what the angle let's say CAB is. Also angle BAC would be the same angle. So you can say it however you want. Now I know they have to all add up to pi. So to find angle CAB all I have to do is take pi and subtract off the values of the other two angles. Now of course as soon as you look at that you see we have some fractional arithmetic to do. So I'm subtracting a bunch of fractions. I'll need a common denominator. Looks like 4 would be a good choice. And I end up in the end with ah, pi by 4. So that's the missing angle, pi by 4. And looks like we actually have an isosceles triangle there because we have two angles that are of the same value. Let's take a look at another example here. Let's say we have a 
So the angle at A here is pi by 3. The angle at C is pi by 3. And that angle up there at B that's missing, let's give it a name, it's angle ABC. Or you could also call it angle CBA. As long as the B's in the middle, that's all that's important. Again, we know all the angles have to add up to pi on the inside. So I can take pi and subtract off the two angles I know. And I'll find the missing angle. Again, we'll need a common denominator. It'll be 3 this time. And it looks like we've got 1 pi by 3 left over. So it turns out this is an equilateral triangle. Now, in any equilateral triangle, of course, all the interior angles have to be pi by 3, since all the angles have to be the same. All right, what if we have a triangle where we've got pi by 6, pi by 3 as interior angles. So I guess this is vertex C. This is vertex B, leaving this one to be A. And if I want to find that angle at A, let's call it BAC, I'll take pi and subtract the two interior angles that I know. So it looks like a common denominator here would be 6. So I'll write everything as sixths. And we're left with 3 pi by 6. Of course, we won't stop there. We'll put it in lowest terms pi by 2. So it turns out we actually have a right angle in that corner there. It's a right angle triangle. For one final example, so we've got an angle here that's pi by 4, an angle here that's pi by 6, two small, fairly small angles. I'd imagine the other one will be obtuse. So that's the angle at B. This is the angle at A. So I'd like to know angle ACB. So I'll take pi and subtract the two interior angles that I know, since they all have to add up to pi. Looks like my common denominator here would be 12. So I put every rewrite everything as twelfths. So I've got 12 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12 minus 2 pi over 12. I guess I'm left with 7 pi over 12. So that's my missing angle right there. Now 7 twelfths of pi is a bit bigger than half of pi, because 6 pi by 12 is a half pi. So this angle is a little bit bigger than a right angle. It's an obtuse angle. So we've seen several different examples. The key thing to take away here is that in every single triangle, doesn't matter what type it is, all the interior angles will add up to pi. Therefore, if you know two interior angles, you can always, always, always find the third. Thank you very much.